In this video, I'm going to show you how AI helped me write three unique children's books for different levels in only five simple steps. Follow along to see how you can go from brain to bookshelf. Hi, welcome back to the AI Lifestyle channel and this is my summary video for month one of our year-long project where I use different generative AI tools and services to complete all my unfinished hobbies and projects and create them at a pro level quality. For more details on project 2023, see my intro video linked in the description. Here is a little snapshot of what I'm trying to complete this year. First, my summary for the month of January, where I aim to become a children's book author. So I was looking for a way to describe my experience with this month's work. I couldn't find the right words, but I found the perfect clip. This is what it feels like after a whole month of prompting, prompting and more prompting to finally get you where you need to be to give, be satisfied with your results. I think that's a hell of a long time. Two billion years. So many of you can relate to that. Now, before we get started, let me give you the five simple steps. I know what you're thinking that these are too obvious. So let me expand it a little bit more. Ah, now it is in the right level of detail. So now that we have our more robust guide that will help us navigate through the whole process, let's get started and look at each one of these steps in much detail. And let's see how you can get started and learn from my experience. The setup. As someone who reads children's books every day to their children, I love these books. Along my fatherhood journey, I started out to create some books that focused on emotional, math, and science-related content. I also wanted to write these books to be more fun for both the adult and the child reading it. I could not make much progress due to a number of reasons that I explained in my intro video. Although writing and illustrating children's books is a creative and fulfilling task, it can also be time consuming and challenging. With the advancements of technology and especially generative AI, I decided to use that in my process. We can now use generative AI tools to help us in this whole process. These tools can assist with writing the text, creating starter illustrations, and even sometimes generating the whole book. In the coming sections, we'll explore the process, benefits of using generative AI tools, and some of the more popular options available. To get started, you'll need to choose a generative AI tool that meets your needs. There are many options to choose from, including online generators and software programs. Here are some of the options that I have tried as part of my journey. OpenAI's ChatGPT Playground. This is by far one of the more popular options out there. With GPT Play Playground, it's the third version of ChatGPT, so it's GPT-3 Playground. You can input a prompt or an outline for your story and the tool will generate the text for you. For example, you might input a program like program prompt like, once upon a time, there lived a little girl named Sally who lived in a magical forest. She loved to explore and have adventures. GPT-3 Playground will then generate a full story based on your prompt. AI Dungeon. AI Dungeon is another tool that allows you to generate text based on your inputs. With AI Dungeon, you can specify the setting, the characters, and events in the story, and the tool will generate the text for you. For example, you might input, Sally is in a magical forest, and she encounters a dragon. She must find a way to defeat the dragon and save the forest. AI Dungeon will then generate a full story based on your inputs. I heard that this is actually really popular with DNDers out there. So they use this to do a lot of the uh, play stories and so on and so forth. Uh, then we have OpenAI's DALI E-Engine. 
This is a image prompter. It's another tool that can generate images based on text prompts. Simply put, you input a description of what you want your image to be and the software will create it for you. For example, if you type a knight riding a dragon while holding a sword into Dali E, it will generate an image of a knight on a dragon wielding a sword. You can go into different prompts like I want a Picasso style image, I want a Salvador Dali style image and so on and so forth. Or you can do different mediums of art like screen printing, layered paper style, etc. Midjourney. Midjourney is a tool that helps you illustrate your children's book. With Midjourney, you can input your story text and specify the style you want for your illustrations. The tool will then generate images for you that you can fine tune and regenerate and so on and so forth. For example, input your story text and specify that you want your illustrations to have a colorful cartoon style. Midjourney will then illustrate, generate illustrations based on your specifications. Art Breeder. Art Breeder is another tool that can help you create illustrations for your children's book. With Art Breeder, you can specify the style, color palette, and mood you're looking for in your illustrations. And the tool will generate the illustrations for you. For example, you might specify that you want your illustrations to have a soft, dreamy style with a pastel color palette. Art Breeder will then generate illustrations based on your specifications. The links to all of these are in my blog post article and in the description below. Now, these are just a few examples of how you can use generative AI in the process of writing and illustrating your children's book. By using these tools, you can save time and effort and still achieve pseudo professional looking results. I will get to this later and how you can kind of fine tune your results and so on and so forth. The options are a plenty, so it's important you pick the tool, the right tool that fits your purpose. Here's how I settled into two of my choices. Essentially, I boiled it down to two categories, text generators and image generators. Let's look at the text generators. These are tools that generate text from a large corpus of books and written material. They use natural language processing, machine learning, and artificial intelligence to produce text based on the given prompt. I chose GPT-3 as it offers great flexibility in generating relevant results with few parameters and has a large training set. Then you have the image generators. These are tools that generate images from text prompts and sometimes even image prompts. They use neural networks to generate realistic looking images based on a given prompt. I chose Midjourney and DALI as they had a very comprehensive set of features, offered multiple image formats, and provided an easy to use API. I could not choose between these two, so I choose them both and split the use between them in two books. This way I was able to offer a good comparison between the two and also try out both of them and see which one works best for which situation. Once you have chosen your tool, you need to come up with a general idea for the book. I have found that relying on the generators to generate an idea for your book produced rather uninspiring results. See below so for some of the rejected ideas that ChatGPT generated that clearly weren't good enough to write a whole book about. Remember that these tools and were trained on already written works and hence will find it really difficult to come up with a completely original, never before unique concept. And that's the differentiator between using these tools for ideas versus content. Their best quality is to assist you in producing content once you have the idea. That is the secret sauce of producing good, unique, original content, is for you to come up with the idea and use these tools as an auxiliary help or a friend in your process of developing your script. Once you have your idea, the next step is to produce content. At this point, do not worry about the quality of content. This was my biggest problem for me in completing these projects prior to AI's help. I struggled to get the words on the page and this is where AI really excels. It can quickly generate large amount of content from a few prompts. And once you have that, you can start refining this. So once you have the initial copy, then it's time to refine and tweak it for maximum impact. AI technology is pretty good at producing generic content, but not as great at creating personalized and nuanced output 
that resonates with your readers and also comes off as your voice. This is where your own work comes in. You need to tweak it to your unique voice, style, and message. The gotcha from before still stands true here. AI is as good at producing works based on the past. You need to produce content that is new and unique for the future. I will describe this process and my experience in great detail below. Once I had a general idea, I sent the prompts over to ChatGPT and produced content. This took a lot of tries to get the prompting right. Below are the few successful examples of successful prompts that had results that I was wanting to tweak and modify. You can also see some of the rejected prompts and things that I, I had to abandon very quickly. Looking at them, you can kind of start to see a pattern building here. It's subtle and cannot be explained, but prompting is an art form on its own. You can look at it in this description of the structure of the prompt. Once you get the hang of it, I found that the speed with which I was able to produce quality outputs with good prompts got faster. At this point, the whole story was just a big blob of story content. This is where the human element comes in again. I took the story and applied basic principles of splitting the story up into chunks based on my experience. I, like I said, I have a three and a four year old and I read children's books to them daily. So I used my experience on how a children's books layout needs to be and split that into different pages. For people that are unfamiliar with the process or are not sure of how to proceed forward, there are great resources on Upwork and Fiverr that you can hire for a quick turnaround. Let us see how we can summarize this writing process. And let's go back to our image that we shared before. As you can see, the first thing that you want to do is pick the tone and style and the audience that you're shooting for with your story. You develop your story idea and that's where you come into picture because you can develop a more unique story idea. You prompt the text generator for starter content is what I would call it. You get that content, you develop that content, you manually rewrite it, use your own voice, structure it. You may have to divide it into different pages. And then there is a lot of iterative prompting that you're doing to get a little more fine-tuned data set that you want to use to kind of further revise and edit and so on and so forth. At this point, if you're satisfied with the quality of the output, you would want to take it for a manual revision um, and you can use AI to do final tone checks and so on and so forth. Um, you know, rewrite some of the passages if you want to change the tone. Um, and at the end, you take it um, either to your friends for your third party review, or you could hire someone on Fiverr or Upwork and they will return it to you in very quick turnaround times. So yes, yeah, so that is in a nutshell, the writing process. And it goes to the next step, which is the illustration process. So we'll see the details of that coming soon.